The content presented is for entertainment purposes only. Some content may not be suitable for all viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. Hello everybody, Jay Rhymes here from the Periodic Review. I hope you all are having a wonderful for, bleh, wonderful day, even one of those th things. <laughs> hey, Mr. Alakai in second chair, how are you doing today, sir? Hey, howdy, hi, hey, partner. <laughs> howdy. Howdy, partner. They've poisoned the water hole. <laughs> There's a snake in my boots. Reach for the sky, this is a, as I'm pointing at your dog. Yeah. And he's not doing anything. So. Oh, yeah. I mean, he used to be able to, when you put your finger up like a gun and say bang, he would like play dead. Oh, sort of. man. I love I love when dogs can do that. That's so cool. <laughs> That's so cool. We haven't done that in a while. We'll have to we'll have to check that out and, and, and try it every yeah. once in a while. I can't tell. Can you see? Yeah, you can see shot? him. Okay, cool. Yep, you can see him. Sweet. <laughs> Anyways. Yeah. Anyways, um, I, I hope I hope you're doing well, my friend. Um, I'm trying to think. Nothing. Nothing too, too new as of late. Uh, my wife and I were trying to clean out our garage so I can park my car back in it now that I got my car back, which is exciting. Um, so I, I had my door damaged. That's new. I, I forgot to tell you about that. So no, yeah, I was gonna say yeah, we were talking about some stuff earlier. But. Yeah. So basically, what happened was it was one of those windy days, and uh, basically the wind grabbed my door and flung it open. And I tried to catch it. I actually broke a nail trying to do it. And I might have said Ouch. that before. Um, and it happened twice. The first time I was like, ooh, I could definitely tell where it was like cracking. Yeah. Right. And I was just like, oh, that's bad. I should probably get that looked at. And then I put it off for about a month and it happened again. It cracked even more. And I was like, well, uh, my door's not sealing properly. I should probably get that fixed now. <laughs> so I got to get my windshield fixed. So. I should probably get my windshield replaced. But that's like. The two things that I hate dealing with as an adult is stuff going on with my car and stuff going on with my phone. Yeah. Like going to Especially those things places. are needed like all the time yeah. nowadays. Yeah. Well, I mean, especially for you because you got a job where both are necessary. Yep. So Necessity. I mean, yeah. <laughs> but like, oh my goodness, going, going to store like cell phone stores to get my phone looked at or to get like any processing done with any of that. I'm like, this is the last thing I want to do. Um, we're not sponsored, but shout out to Visible. I switched to them and they're great. So, um, and then dealing with my, with like my car, like I've had this crack in my windshield forever now. Like oh, the last, no. like it was like it started as a little star crack, and then over the winter, I think it was like the last time this year that we had frost, I woke up went out to my car and there was just that star turned into a crack across my windshield oh no so yeah i need to get i just need at this point i need to get my windshield replaced like there's there's no repairing it yeah <laughs> like, that's something i gotta replace now which yeah which is fine but i mean uh, i don't want to <laughs> yeah it, it's a pain in the butt especially um like i actually had to get a rental and i had a rental for like three weeks and it was weird because i'm not used to the vehicle and what was that all about? I'm moving Making some strange noises. I was sitting forward and I was realized I was like, you know what? I'm going to sit back like I normally do. So I'm going to kick back and relax. So now we're back to normal. My apologies. No, you're good, brother. You're good. Um, so, uh, so just to let you guys all know, uh, today's episode is sponsored by viewers like you. So thank you. Uh, we'd love to hear your thoughts on the matter. So don't forget to leave us a comment in the section down below. Uh, if we earn your subscription today, don't forget to click that red subscribe button, hit that damn bell, and turn on your notifications so you don't miss a content release. The best way to support the channel is to share this live stream with family and friends and crush that like button. Blood button? Button? <laughs> button? Button even? Also, you can send us all your topic ideas, articles, and video links to theperiodicreview at gmail.com. If you Woo! missed yesterday's live stream, the Periodic Review Podcast is now free on Spotify, YouTube, Rumble, and Facebook. All of our links in the description down below. So welcome to the show. So I'm trying to think of like what's been on my mind lately. I was going to say, we're and so we're pretty much winging it today. Yeah, we're winging it today. Uh, <laughs> it's, we, it's third Monday. It's supposed to be Miss Rhianna, and I think she uh, she got 
held back at work. So we're just like, well, we're just gonna we're just gonna go live and see what happens. Which is <laughs> one fine. Of those Which is fine. This is one of those podcasts where like we might go completely off the rails with one topic <laughs> and then just start. We're talking about one thing, then we talk about another thing, and we go to another thing, and then it just kind of goes from there. And then right. we'll just kind of come up with the 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 actual overarching. Uh, title of this video in this episode and we'll do it after the fact because we don't know what we're going to talk about today at so this point interesting. at this point i'm just kind of letting my adhd take the reins <laughs> which could be very good or very bad so, it, it depends on the day for me yeah. so um i think i'm going to start with uh so i've been <laughs> y'all know that I, I i really enjoy uh listening to joe rogan's podcast and Jerothy um, rogan mr mr joseph rogan um, and he had a, a director on who directed, uh, a, a certain, uh, UFO kind of, uh, I don't even remember what it was called now. That's, that's really bad of me. UFOs. But anyways, it was supposed to be, uh, kind of like a, an additional, um, documentary about, uh, Bob Lazar and his experience and kind of basically, talking about his past and how like it was kind of really difficult for people to kind of pin down if, if he was speaking the truth and that he actually, you know, worked on area 51 and the people that worked around him and stuff like that, they had a hard time figuring out where he went to high school, where he went to college. And there was like a lot of, you know, speculation on if he's really telling the truth um, about, you know, where he got his education and everything. Um, and it was really funny because uh, Joe Rogan is like, hey, this is like the, the one documentary that got me back because apparently he was starting to kind of wane on his uh, UFO and alien beliefs. And like, apparently this one brought him right back. And I was like, oh, OK, I'm going to watch that and I'm going to see. And I watched it and I was like, eh, <laughs> not not really. Um, what was the documentary called? It was on Amazon. Uh, let me pull it up really quick. Amazon. Bob Lazar. I think it it's uh, uh Dude, I started it Bob I Lazar st- Area 51 and okay. Flying Saucers was the 2018 okay. Uh Netflix release. I think uh I think it went back to rental. But yeah, that's the one. It's the one with his is uh you know big rim glasses and it has UFOs <laughs> on top. It looks yeah. it looks really janky and and <laughs> I want to talk about this a little bit because I've watched quite a few different um, UFO and alien documentaries. And I'm just like, you know, I I would really like to give a lot of these people like more credence and, and give them more credit and more benefits of the doubt. But it's like, <laughs> there's not really a lot going on as far as like, if these individuals had what happened to them, happened to them. You know, there's nobody there to cor- corroborate or if there are people that corroborate it, you know, it's just people's, um, you know, eyewitnessing things. There's not really any physical evidence, e- even though some people say, oh, yeah, we have some soil samples and stuff like that. But like everybody just wants to use people's experiences. And I understand that, like, people want to hold on to that. But if you want to prove something, especially in like a court of law, like you have to have physical evidence to go along to cooperate with all of these individuals and their uh, eyewitness accounts. Yeah. So for me, like I'm very much a rational person when it comes to literally anything. So like when it comes to like paranormal stuff or stuff going on with aliens, if I'm brought to a place where it's like, Oh yeah, like this place is totally haunted. Immediately my, my brain goes to like, let's provoke the shit out of this place. <laughs> let's wake let's, the spirits. Let's, let's see what's in here. Like I'll, I'll, immediately not immediately like i'll usually go okay this place is haunted okay and i'll start like trying to find ways to provoke whatever this is going on yeah and all the puppies are freaking out <gasps> they're excited hi sweetie what welcome what what no that you are not horrible. Rianne, we are so happy. We are here. so happy to see you, my love. We're just welcome back. We're just talking about aliens really quick. Yeah. But uh <laughs> but anyways. That's a good um, topic. But my, my thought was like if any any place is like, oh yeah, like this is haunted, I'm like, nope. Time to provoke. 
Cause, you know, always like look for like what's going on. Like, and I can turn you hot. Like, is it is it really aliens? Is it really like a spirit that's going on in this place, or is it just like bad pipes, bad wiring, or whatever the hell is going on? Yeah. Or um, yeah, and then there's definitely something where you know people do have reactions to certain like electro activities and stuff like that. Yeah, electro activities and like electromagnetic magic. What <laughs> electro magic? Electro electromagnetic. <laughs> Okay, babe, I'll turn you up. But so, um, like, but the theory that um, is talked about, like, in the ancient aliens documentary with all the pyramids. Yeah. Some of the, like, some of that evidence is pretty convincing. Some of it's like, oh, okay, like, this is kind of ridiculous, or like, I can understand why this would be like, like, how this would make sense. Yeah. Um, I was having a conversation about it the other day with a close friend of mine, and we were talking about how, um, like, how how do these build these like perfect pyramids. And I, I do kind of think that the ancients back then were way more advanced than we give them credit for. Oh yeah. I, um, I definitely agree with that for sure. Yeah. But the thing that throws me off is how all these pyramids are pointing true North. Yeah. That kind of freaks me out a little bit. Wait, how They're does the sitting, pyramid face true North? Or I like mean, it leans or it's like the direct, I guess. I don't understand. Understand. Like one of its faces that. is. Uh huh. So one of the, so, when they're on the on, when they're on the grid, they fit perfectly, and they all like fit in that square that faces true north. And don't they also sense? like are like the the belt of Orion's belt, like the three yeah. pyramids in of yeah out in so, Egypt. So then here's the other thing that um, is kind of weird is the fact that like other pyramids have been found throughout the world in places that you would never think, like in Antarctica. They found a pyramid that covered in ice. No way. Yeah. Not I like, didn't hear about that. Not like, not like the super tall ones that you see in Egypt, but like the, like they're a little bit more flat, but they're still, they're still pyramids and they also face true north. Well, and they're found in like, um, Europe. Too. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah, ancient Europe and stuff. So mm-hmm. they're, they're everywhere. So, and I'm sorry for being late. I joined the conversation. We're, we're so good, happy babe. that you're here. We're, we're glad you're here. Pyramids in Antarctica. Did you talk about like watching the Skinwalker thing? Is that how this Ooh. came up? Oh, that was the next I'm almost, thing. I actually I'm almost was done with talk the, about I'm that. Almost the done Skinwalker with that. Ranch in Utah. Yeah. So I have a hard time when it comes to reality TV. Like any yeah, reality too. TV, I'm like, okay, like this. There are places where this can be faked, and like, and a lot of it, I'm like trying. I'm like having a hard time with, but I mean, still. No yeah, way. These yeah. can't. These can't be real. They're they're in the ancient aliens documentary, bruh. I don't know if those are the ones. Are those like pyramids those, or like those are mountains like carved in the pyramid shapes? I don't or? know. I don't know if like if that's the image that was found, but like the pictures that I saw were like Let me see. satellite pictures. satellite images. Yeah. Antarctica's claim oldest pyramid on Earth hidden on in, in ice. I mean that looks really symmetrical for just the. So can I t- zoom this in? Oh, okay, I can. Cool. Anyway, was it F eleven? Like gets rid of. Yeah, there we go. That's but, interesting. Yeah, so it's just they're found in these places that you would never really think about. Like you, you always kind of assume like, oh yeah, the pyramids were just an Egyptian thing, but yeah, or even like um, Mayan, Aztec, Incan kind of thing. But yeah, I think it's really interesting, especially when. Uh, no, like I like. Have you uh, heard of the book Chariot of the Gods? I've heard of the book. I haven't read it though. Okay, so there's there's also kind of like a documentary kind of version, kind of styled version of the book, like from the '80s. That you, I think it's on Netflix. You can watch it for free. Okay. Um, but I started watching that, and I thought that was really interesting. Um, and it kind of goes over their their evidences and and stuff like that. Um, but I think it was really interesting is that these these individuals like on different continents around the world where like even bef- like uh, allegedly before they had like boats and stuff like that they were building similar stuff which is very interesting and that is interesting and not only that but there's like different like uh carvings in like pottery carvings in like stone and stuff like that uh where they they look like indigenous people from different parts of the world that that uh didn't make sense because in that time apparently according to these historians and stuff they didn't have people of those like different races and you know different 
cultures and stuff like that around those people weren't connected yeah so it was like, like really physically. strange well that could maybe be attributed to the hundred monkey the hundredth monkey syndrome <laughs> or theory have you guys heard of that where Hundredth monkey syndrome right what's that it's not syndrome it's the hundred monkeys theory where I like, I like monkeys so basically they observe like a monkey figures out a how to use a specific tool or mm -hmm. item, right? And he teaches a friend and then they use it together and stuff. And then they figure like once about a hundred monkeys have figured out how to use this, they've observed like there's observation that other monkeys who had no no relation to that maybe particular group of monkeys. So it's like totally separate group of monkeys, but maybe in the same genus and stuff. They started using the the same tool the same way or whatever. Like they oh, started okay. using sticks for the same thing. And it's like after the hundredth monkey kind of figured it out, the collective consci consciousness. Kind of were able to observe their to experiences. To figure it out. Like they, they, they had the thought to utilize the tool the same way. That's interesting. interesting. And so That's like cool. it expresses like how we're connected on a weird consciousness level. So like if a certain amount of people have a certain amount of thought. So they've done experiments with this where they've gotten like over a hundred people, like a hundred children to meditate. And they it's like actually observable like through um, radio waves and stuff how they they can track it like on sonars and stuff when they were meditating or praying or large groups are praying and stuff. So it's really cool. Cause like, we're all kind of part of a consciousness. So when you're saying like, well, these people over here had no contact with these people in Egypt, but yet they're building the same mm -hmm. structures that could be like a shared consciousness somehow. Kind of. Yeah. There's all these series with like quantum physics and all that stuff. Well, and I know that there has been like FBI studies and stuff like that. You remember the the, the movie uh, Men Who Stare at Goats? Yes! I freaking love it! So okay. you know, it is a satirical film on like some actual studies that like the government was going through to try to do psychological warfare okay, through you guys. meditation and, you know. I know a guy who did that. You know what this kind of makes me think of? <laughs> I know a guy. It's crazy. <laughs> he gave me a, a, a prediction and I'll tell it, but go ahead. I was, I was just going to say it's not that exciting as a prediction but this just makes me think of like every like the all of us guys have the same thinking when we go to a beach we all just want to dig a hole yeah <laughs> like it's like give me a shovel i'm gonna dig a hole we'll see how deep we can go or like we'll make like or what we i don't can know make. like a cool like a cool hangout spot or like like all of us guys like like any guys that are watching this like comment and let me know like when you go to a beach do you want to dig a hole yeah, that would be interesting like, to see how many people like to dig a hole. When that they is interesting. Like, Men specifically, maybe. Literally, literally, when I was when I was like eleven or twelve years old, my dad took me and my best friend at the time camping at a uh, Pyramid Lake, uh, and this is in uh, Nevada. And Pyramid Lake is a very like it's just super desert and deserty. And when we got there, me and my friend were like, "You want to dig a hole?" So, so the two of us, we got a couple of shovels and we just started digging a hole in the, in the sand. So random. And then like growing up later, we're like, hey, remember that time that we dug a hole at the beach? And we were like, oh yeah, like I still love doing stuff like that. And come to find out like a bunch of other guys that, that I've talked to love digging holes at the beach. So that's it, funny. It's just. That would be a fun study to do if yeah. anybody wants to. How many guys like to dig holes at the beach? Like, you're right? <laughs> Seriously. Everybody's okay. just like, it's time Anyways. to dig a hole. So you guys yeah. want to hear this? Because yes. this is legit because we've been watching documentaries and stuff does, about. Does this like, person want this information out? Like, did, is this Well, it's not like that... I'm going to give his name. Well, okay. It's, it's my experience, so okay. I can share it. It's fine. I, I'm just saying, if you're comfortable doing it, go for it. So this guy, let me tell you how I got introduced to him. But, like, we've been watching, like, how they've been unclassifying all these UFO things and everything, like, the... 
CIA has been releasing the oh yeah there are the navy and and army and there are unidentified objects and they're like totally verifying now that this is actually happening and And they don't know anything about them right where they came from or who they're responsible for so what's funny is I met this guy so when I graduated high school I worked for a chiropractor who practiced like energy therapy and stuff and and like use the meridian system on the body to reset things and so we kind of attracted some more of the more um woo woo is what we'll call it because that's what you know woo woo type of people yeah so anyway this guy came in and he was he came up to me and he said you're gonna work at a domestic violence shelter or straight organization up. straight up straight up you're Not gonna blunt. work yes and he's like you're gonna do something where you're helping women who have been abused and stuff but you're not gonna do direct service because that's too hard for you but you're gonna have to figure out how to shield yourself from the energy because you're you will absorb the energy and the stress of it and everything so you've got to figure that huh. out is that like, true this is true and this is like this is what's crazy the reason why it came up like i'm having this is because like i was driving the other day and it came up, it's like, remember so-and-so when he... When was this? 1999. So over 20 years ago. So shortly after high school? Right after high school. I just yeah. graduated. So do we really have a destiny set out for us? No, but here's the thing. He said, like, he he would sit and talk to us and... He was having shoulder trouble, so I would be his surrogate. So mainly, I would have to go and be in the appointment. And the doctor would use my arm to muscle test, and I would have to touch the patient. I'm also having shoulder trouble. <laughs> this is so funny. <laughs> anyway, so like I, he would sit and talk to us about like the training he did for the um, CIA and how they were doing these type of experiments and how he figured out how to tap into psychic energy and read future and all this sort of stuff. And so he came in and like told me that. And I was like, that's such bull crap. 20 years later, I'm working for an organization that serves domestic violence survivors. Hmm. And I am truly stressed all the time. So I've got to figure out. And I think the reason why that popped in my head is because I was like, man, I am so stressed. I've got to figure out how to manage my stress better because it's killing me. Right. Feel it physically and blah 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 so let me ask you this Rianne uh-huh. um, so did did that conversation stick with you throughout the years was it something that you were I mean obviously you remember it now but was it something that you consciously like thought about so so you don't think it was like you weren't actively seeking out no working and, where and you the work only now? reason why the only reason why it came in is because I was consciously meditating like Consciously thinking, like, why is this happening? And, like, looking for answers in my own mind, right? Mm-hmm. Like, so it was like a memory that you unlocked and you're like, oh, yeah. Yes. Like, okay. So it's like a memory had unlocked. Like, I was... That's cool. My I was searching... Because your brain will find answers, right? Like, you ask yourself enough questions. When you say, I don't know, your brain says, yep, you're right, you don't know. And it stops. But if you ask yourself a question... And just let it go and run. It will answer it. It's designed to do that. So pro mm, tip, guys, no longer say, I don't know. Start asking yourself questions. Right. No, seriously. <laughs> it's true. And if you look into NLP and all that stuff, that's what they talk about. But it was so interesting because that clicked in and I was like, oh, my gosh. And what's funny is because I remember him teaching me some different techniques to like set my intention and like protect my energy and all this sort of stuff. Like he was, he actively told me a few things to do every time he came in and met with a doctor. It was so cool. He was a really cool guy. Anyway, he popped into my head after I haven't thought about him in years. So don't reveal his name, but do you remember his name? Yes. Hmm. Interesting. I do. I have, I, so I have a hard time with names. I do too. So that's why I was kind of like, Oh That's my gosh. Cool. And then I was like, oh my gosh, that is freaky just how that happened. But there were people who were trained in like CIA and stuff who like really tapped into that stuff and understand how to work with the mind and like the energetic field, electromagnetic, energetic field, all that sort of stuff. And they were trained how to utilize it, how to access it, how to manipulate it. 
and all that sort of stuff. So if you go Damn. watch, I'm not, I'm not even joking, and I have a personal experience with it, and it's like I can actually say it happened because it like that's literally crazy. fruition. That's People crazy, are thinking dude. I'm. They're like, no, that's just crazy. No, seriously, I've been like thinking about it nonstop because it happened last weekend. So I was like, huh. holy crap. And then I was like, how many times has that happened in my life? And then there was another lady at that I worked with when I worked for the state of Utah. No joke. She she would always, she's like, yeah, I'm psychic, but it freaks people out. And I'm like, are you serious? And she's like, yeah. And I was actually go <laughs> no, listen to this. I was going through a divorce at the time from my first marriage. I was struggling. And she came up to me and she said, don't worry. There's somebody for you. He's tall. He plays the guitar. She like literally described Jacob to a T. Hmm. And it was so weird because she's like, it's going to be a minute. He's making some of his own choices. Two years later, three years later, three years later, I met Jacob. And it was like she described him. And I do remember that. I remember that when I met Jacob, actually. <laughs> you remember looking for that and being like, yep, that's the one. <laughs> no, I remember when I met Jacob and like everything started happening really fast. And then... Like, wait a minute. Well, huh. <laughs> just like have that realization. Yeah, I was like, like, like turn like turning your head. Well, and it came to me like I was sitting there. I was like, is this like is this dude really who I'm supposed to be like connecting with? And like I was doing that like internal check in prayer and stuff. And then it, like that popped in as like a reminder, like, boom, remember this. And I was like, oh, that totally. So. But it's weird because I didn't think about it until I met Jacob and I saw him and I was like, oh my gosh, wait, what? Wait, really? Oh, wow. Yeah, I remember this. So it's weird. Interesting. I wonder how many more more people out there have those kinds of experiences where where somebody who who has claimed to have, you know, these kind of gifts or clairvoyancy or, you know, some kind of you know, premonitions or, or whatever the case may be connection to the energy of the universe, however you want to call it. Uh, I wonder how many people are really experiencing that and really having, you know, real experiences and, and what the percentage is for people versus people who, who have experiences with these people. And it doesn't turn out the way that Gee, I wish I was, I don't think I'm into <laughs> that kind of stuff at all. Well, you know, what is so weird is these aren't, I was for a bit, but these aren't anymore. people I went out to pay money to, to tell them to have them tell me my future. Right. It's not like I went to a card reader to have, them. in fact, every psychic and card reader or angel reader or whatever that I've gone to. That you've my, either sought, that sought my, you out or you're, you've had people. No, my mom, to. my mom likes to like set stuff up like that. <laughs> so I go to them every once in a while to make feel better. But like the most accurate and the most impactful ones have been when people I know as acquaintance or whatever mm -hmm. have like shared things with me hmm. and then that like comes true. Interesting. Like they're gifted people, but I, it's not like I went to them and said, Hey, let me pay you money and tell me my future. Right. They, they have a sight. They, they saw it and they told me and I was like, okay. Like a sixth sense. Yeah. If you will. Yeah. There hmm. we go. That's interesting. That's word to... So it was really interesting, but it was like one of those long Island medium moments. That's, cr that's crazy. Like I think about stuff like that all the time and I'm just like, I'm, so jealous like i wish i wish i could have an experience like that what like, where people tell you or where you get well actually both if, if i if i could have the ability to like here's the see thing. see a sixth sense or have that or to have somebody tell me like i i would be fascinated by that but so like, i don't think i'm in tune with that kind of stuff at all if someone were to tell me my future i'd honestly probably be like yeah until it happens 20 years later and then you're like what the hell and i'll be like oh yeah i remember that one time yeah <laughs> see that, that that's what happens yeah. so somebody's probably already told you it's just gotta no i i can't recall an experience where anybody's told me my future i but then again like i've never really actively sought out like maybe um, but that but was like, the thing maybe somebody has said it you just don't remember it right now and you'll remember it when it hits yeah maybe like it did with me and my CAA operative <laughs> patient that I will not say his name. Yeah. 
What about the the stuff that's that's kind of uh, set around like the law of attraction and stuff like that? Where oh, I you can, love law of attraction. You can apparently like will stuff in your life and everything that you want. You can bring it to yourself. And what what are you where are you guys at on that kind of stuff? I don't go that far, but I do. Your like, thoughts become things, kind of thing. Yeah. So like, imagine it like like a fire almost. Like it, whatever you put on the fire, it's gonna it's just gonna get bigger and bigger. So whatever you fuel. Yeah. You're like whatever you focus on. Yes. Uh, Yeah. So it's like, if you have a bunch of stuff to complain about, then like you're going to be miserable. But if you like look at all the things that you have in your life and like be thankful for the love and like the friendships that you have, then it's like, cool. That's what you're going to attract. It's like in order to, in order to, um, it's like that saying, like in order to have good friends, you need to be a good friend. If you're mm-hmm. if you're if you're a terrible friend, then you're either not going to have any friends, or the friends that you're going to have are not going to be great. So. Right. Well, and they say like if you want to attract your ideal partner, then be, be the your kind of, ideal partner. Yeah. Like be the kind of person they'd be attracted to. Mm-hmm. And so, and that's kind of what started when I. Does that does that kind of like go against like you being the person that you are versus trying to be something that you're not. But that's the thing. We can create whoever we want to be. Like we're born with certain personality traits and whatever, but it isn't impossible to rewire your brain or rewire personality. It takes a lot of work, but it is possible. Yeah. But after your brain has developed, it's, it's a lot more difficult. Like your brain isn't as malleable. True. True. But it's possible. Well, it's isn't possible, your sure. isn't, isn't your brain only fully developed for a certain amount of time, and then it starts to yeah decline somewhere around twenty four, twenty six years. Your brain starts decaying. No, I thought, it doesn't I thought it was, start decaying. So from what I from what I understood, it was twenty five so that your brain fully develops between twenty four the ages. So between ages six and eight is when like your your brain steps out of like the theta mode or whatever. Okay. It basically is a sponge, right? Between from newborn to six to eight, you're just a sponge observing your environment, observing everything like, and that's where a lot of your rigid, your core um, beliefs about yourself and everything are developed is in that age. So how you're treated by parents. Uh, no wonder Mormonism treated, messed me up so much. Right? That's <laughs> No, but it's true. Like how you're treated as a parent by your parents and peers and everything. That kind of sets your tone hey. for your personality. Okay. So I'm getting some mixed results here. Uh, I'm seeing as late as 45 years of age. And I've, I'm seeing as early as 26 to 30 years of okay. age. Okay. From, from what I understood in psychology, the classes that I took in yeah. college, um, I remember hearing 25 was about the age that your brain fully develops, mm-hmm. but like within, it's like within five years, like by the time you hit your thirties, it starts to decline. Yeah. Start, it starts to decline again. They're, they're saying around, so, around oh, 10 years know. or so after your brain fully develops, it, it starts to decline. Okay. So around the, the mid thirties. Boys, Starbuck. Doggos. Starbuck. Hey, Shh. if Come you're going to fight, don't fight around me. Hey, he's knock it off. <laughs> Come here, Starbuck. Anyway, so, but yeah, they, your brain doesn't fully develop or you don't have like solid sense of self and all that sort of stuff until the age of like 25, t- between 24 and 26. It's not like was, exact. It's dependent on a lot of things. Yeah, too. Yeah, I yeah, was men and women like, are very different. So it'll definitely probably be earlier for women and probably later for men, depending on your, uh, your progression in life. <laughs> I was going to say, I'm, I am 25 and like, there are a lot of things that I know for sure about myself. And there are a lot of things that I'm like, dang, like I, uh, existence sucks or it doesn't Bro. necessarily suck. It's just, it's complicated. Yeah. Like I, I feel you there. I feel like, you know, I've gone through enough stuff to kind of go like, I really don't know who, who or what or how yeah. I, I am existing right now. Um, I had that, I had that, you know what I my, mean? Like <laughs> on my 25th birthday, I had like a whole, like full on panic attack of like, Oh shit. Like, I don't know who I am anymore. Like, on my 25th birthday, it was, yeah, it was not great. <laughs> I, yeah, I had that about five, five-ish years ago. When did we do uh, impact training? Was that about? Four years ago. About four years ago. 
Yeah, somewhere around there, I was just like, life does not make sense because like, um, we went through this this training and uh, it was it was definitely had some interesting experiences there, but it was like, you were you were pretty resistant to some. Oh, things. it was. Compl- I was I was resistant to majority of, of it. Um, and that's just because like I've I've been so like I've <laughs> it's kind of like the. Uh, my analogy I can think of right now is when you realize that there was no Santa Claus, like when you realize there was no Easter bunny, when you realized that this was something uh, like a story that was made up for you as a kid to enjoy. And then once you realize it's no longer there, it, it seems like that like your world comes crashing in because you feel like your whole life has been a lie because you've believed this for so long. I kind of liken it to that. So it's a little, it's weird for me because it's like growing up in the LDS faith. Um, I think deep down in my heart, I kind of felt like I was almost playing pretend for a really, really long time. Yeah. And then by the time that I hit my 20s and I found out all the stuff about Joseph Smith, about um, how the Quorum of the Seven, how the Quorum of the Seventy really operates, um, all the cases about um assaults going on in boy scouts and within the church that nobody talks about Uh, after hearing all that and like losing my faith it was like part of me was just totally unfazed by it i the only time i felt like that real heartbreak and like oh man like i feel so lied to it was it, it was in the church when i started to realize that the people that I was surrounded by really didn't give a shit about me. Yeah. That was, that was like what really broke my heart. It was never the belief system. Cause I think deep down in my heart, I always knew or felt like I was just playing pretend. Yeah. So like growing up and finding that out, it was like, eh, not as, not as phased as I thought I would have been. So, yeah, we got a ghost over here. <laughs> <laughs> if you're watching on YouTube, there's a, little- <laughs> I guess I have to move my head a little bit. So can, <laughs> yeah. The dog's trying to make Home his own boy. bed and he was under the covers. <laughs> <laughs> I think this blanket needs to be washed. Probably. I was wondering what was that. It's kind of smelled kind of funky down here. So maybe it, it needs to be washed. That's what she said. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> bit of Fremonda cheese. Oh, um, <laughs> or he said. Yeah. So, I mean, <sighs> like... You know, I, I, I like really about four or five years ago, like I've started to kind of have a, an identity crisis as far as like who I was and, you know, feeling like what I believed wasn't what I believed. And I was just like kind of holding on to, you know, what my, my family, my parents, my friends, you know, you know, people within the faith. And I was just kind of like, I feel like I was going along with it because I needed to kind of fulfill this need to continue to be a part of it and uh um even though i had my own personal experiences as they call it like when you pray and stuff but it's like having those same feelings when you pray about other things and going okay that's a really weird reaction um because i had those same feelings when i prayed this way and about these things and you know i feel like i got answers to those prayers and like sometimes i'm just like i don't know it's just kind of like I felt so lost like for, for a long time. And now like I'm feeling more, I guess, confident in that, you know, being lost in this, in this world and not, and trying to figure it out all over again, (laughs) feeling like that foundation that was built was just like completely like taken out and then trying to figure out where you're at in that world. It's like having, honestly, I feel like uh, I'm an alien on another planet and all the things that are going yeah. around me is like, doesn't yeah. make sense anymore. <laughs> that's, that's like one of the, that's one of the best ways that I've ever heard it described is like when you feel like an alien yeah, and you feel, you're, you yourself are from a different world. Yeah. Like you don't, you don't feel right in your skin. You don't feel right. You know, interacting nothing fits. with people, nothing fits. Like nothing seems to be going the way you think it should be going. And it just like, you're just kind of like floating along kind of nebulous in this like cloud of unknowingness. And it's, 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 it's kind of a weird feeling, but like, yeah, I was really scared for a while. Like when I was going through this and, you know, and, and trying to go through that, you know, with my wife and everything. And it's just kind of been interesting, <laughs> kind of building all that stuff back up and figuring out like what I believe in and 
how I believe and what is my belief system. And it's, it's, it's a lot different than what it was, was before, but you know, I feel like I'm, you know, being more honest and I'm being more myself. Uh, what's the word? Um, authentic. Yeah. That's the word being authentic, uh, to myself authentic. versus trying to put on a, a, a face. And I think a lot of, I think, you know, people are calling this new, this thing called masking. Have you guys heard of masking where people basically portray certain emotions, yes. certain feelings, certain thought patterns, yep. certain beliefs, because they feel like that's what everybody else needs to see instead of reflecting what's on the inside. Yep. That's how I was in the church. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's crazy though. Cause it's like, yeah, I've had those ex- existential crisis crises where, um, like on one hand, I'm like, man, the universe is so big. It probably wouldn't be that big of a deal if I just packed up a big camping backpack and just started hitchhiking across the country. And then I have like these other uh, moments of crisis where I'm like, dang, like I really haven't done that much great with my life. I need to do whatever I can to be a bi- like a billionaire by now. But it's like, dude, you're only 25. Not- <laughs> I know. <laughs> that's, the, that's the thing with the millennial generation, though, is like a lot of people in their 20s are have like this weird belief that by the time that they're 30 they will be a billionaire even though they don't have a job i have a job but well i mean that is kind of like weird. you know what's sold to us is like the american dream like you yeah, have, yeah. You i don't know, think it's beautiful sold as home the american and white dream. picket fence you have this job and you have like no cares in the world because you're making all of this money and it's the millennial disadvantage that but um, there is that yeah that millennial up. mindset where you're just like oh i'm just going to be an influencer and i'm going to make hundreds of thousands of dollars a week and it's like some of them do some of them do and d- yeah some of them do but of the vast majority like of of individuals make under two hundred thousand dollars a year the vast majority of people in america yeah and unfortunately that's kind of how it's built. Like not everybody's going to be a business owner. Not everybody's going to be a manager or CEO of like a billion dollar company or fortune 500. Like, unfortunately that's just not the world that we live in. And it's kind of funny where it's kind of being portrayed as, Oh yeah, everybody should be equal in, in being billionaires. It's like, that doesn't make sense. Unfortunately. Can you guys guess what the average income was as of 2020? $80,000 a year. No, Lower? Average income of what though? And just where? In, just the average, average median income, income? In, of Americans in the US. Median or Yeah. Don't look it up, Jacob. I'm oh, watching yeah, your computer. Sorry. Right. I, I, I said I could. Well, I said eighty thousand, you said no, and I asked it's is it lower 000. and you didn't 40? say anything. It is a little bit lower, it's a little bit higher. Fifty thousand. So it's sixty seven thousand is the medium oh that's median house terrible. So that's, you know what's even more terrible is we're not even there. So the thing is, like, this is more than what school teachers are making. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like school teachers are making between, like, 30 and 50, depending on what field they're in. Yeah. Um, or where and they're their at education in the state. level. Yeah. Um, and if they have a master's, they're on the higher end, but 50,000. If they have a an- master's, they're probably a professor. Or- no, not necessarily. Like perfect, like some like secondary and primary education require a master's. In fact, they all do unless you have your teaching degree with a bachelor's. Or yeah, yeah, your license. Um, yeah, <laughs> sixty-seven. That's like what? What job can you think of that pays 60, 67 thousand a year? I know, like some PR specialists make about that much. If not more so. Any IT related field. Yeah. Average is between 60 on the low end and 90 on the high end at entry. See, my, uh, <laughs> my, one of my English teachers in high school told us what his uh, salary was. And he had been teaching for 20 something years. And, um, by the time he was where he was at, he was making 92 K a year, hmm. which that's for, still not a lot. Not, not in this day and age. Keep in mind, this is in California. Oh, yeah. that's really low. In, that 
considering California too. Yeah, though. and it took yeah, him twenty something living. years. Yeah, cost of living yeah. is astronomical out there. Like, like our house right now out there would probably be like six hundred thousand dollars. Not quite, but hell, the frick no. No, actually, the housing market in Utah is actually reflective of the housing market in um, California right now. Mm. Yeah, which it, which is wouldn't insane. It. It's Utah. Like you wouldn't think, but I mean, they're it's trying to California the, or Utah. I was like, that was. There's multiple reasons for it. Probably because so many of us from California are moving here. <laughs> You're like, tax these mother effers. <laughs> Not saying that California is bad. I'm just saying, like, there's no, a lot of nonsense going on in California. No, no the bad. policies we're in here. California are bad. Yeah, we Not don't want people. those pal. Yeah, the people I'm sure like are very great. I mean, hell, we know I'm some. really good friends with one of them. <laughs> we know some, yo. But my father's, you know, lives there. Their policies are policies are not no bueno, but they well, just cover a bloated government. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. So so mm. so kind of going back is that like you know I, I'm still struggling with the whole thing of like you know like being of divine nature and stuff like that. I I still you know and under a, 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 the impression that there is something greater than us out there. Um, I just don't know what it is or what the purpose is, you know, and stuff like that. Like, I like to believe that there is something after this life. And uh, at the same time, it's like, well, there's an po- equal possibility that there's absolutely nothing and this is this is it. Um, so it's kind of a weird roller coaster ride. Uh, it's, <laughs> it with my mind, is just like, oh, yeah, hey, God, how's it going? Oh, wait, you don't exist. Oh, wait, I, but I believe in you, but but there's no way to prove that you exist. And so it's like, I don't know, it's kind of funny. Are you Are you about to have one of those? <laughs> are you about to have a crisis right now? No, no, not at all. <laughs> but what are you guys' thoughts on, uh, you know, if we if we go on, if we go with the thought process and the philosophy and the theory on, you know, us evolving, you know, from primordial ooze to like single celled organisms and all the way up to, you know, primates all the way up to what we are today. Um, where, where are you guys at on that? I'm just curious. Why are you getting all deep? My brain's too tired for this. <laughs> so my... <laughs> I kind of have a few thoughts on it is like I've always been fascinated and like in a way kind of hopeful for the idea of reincarnation. Um, I also don't know if that's necessarily a realistic thing. Hmm. I I don't know if anything's realistic anymore, but like um, what is what is reality? You'd have to define that first. That's a fun question, (laughs) though. So (laughs) when you come back in your next life, what do you want to come back as? I would. I would. And why don't you remember your previous lives? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, If I could, I would. I would like to come back as a dog. Um, But um, then there, there's the whole idea of like this. My theory is that um, God is actually, or our, our idea of God isn't necessarily god it's aliens and we were we're just this project and that's why you have all these similar stories of people like oh yeah i was i was abducted or like i had this experience and the thing is they're all the same shared experience Mm -hmm. um but that's also highly suspect too people are just like oh that's interesting i know how i can feel yeah that is true or or unique i know i had an experience just like them and i'm going to tell people about it yeah that is that is true it's very true um but still like or they're crazy <laughs> but then you have <laughs> stuff like the pyramids or skinwalker skinwalker ranch where that stuff is like okay like what if aliens are actually like just observing us and like that's that's just it like they're they're we're a science project and we're being observed like the dino- like what if the dinosaurs were created what if um the evolution from monkeys to humans was like actually the process of how it was supposed to go mm-hmm. um well there is a theory on 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 the whole like where dinosaurs came from there's actually i mean there is the theory that dinosaurs were here and then the asteroid hit the earth and then completely wiped them out uh, alternatively there's a there's a theory that the moon was actually earth 1 and basically what happened is uh, another moon or another projectile from the universe hit Earth-1, broke apart the moon, and slammed into what is known as Earth-now, and all of the matter from those planetary bodies or you know whatever came from space ended up being a part of everything that is on this hemisphere, and that's where the bones and everything and the oil and stuff came from. There's, there's that theory as well. There's that, yeah. 
Well, and what's interesting is that the stormed ape theory is is where basically you know the 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 these primates basically would eat these mushrooms off of the ground and then it would it would increase their mental capacity and over you know millions of years they ended up becoming us, um you know through eating these these mushrooms, <laughs> you know, I'm, which is an interesting theory as well. I met these two monkeys that worked for Amazon once. <laughs> there there were primates. <laughs> Anyways, sorry. That was a great job, oh, dude. My gosh. That was a good job. Sorry. Con- continue. Well done, sir. Continue. Well done. Well thank done. You, thank you. Thank you. Um Yo. <laughs> we go from aliens to monkeys to CIA to more monkeys to Yeah, who knows? Who knows what we're going to pyramids to a dad joke. A total dad joke. <laughs> a total dad joke. <laughs> Anyways, go on. you should put that on your uh, Tinder profile. Excuse Great me. at dad jokes. You I know. feel like that would that would send so many people. But did away. they ever find <laughs> the the missing missing link? To missing link to what? Uh, My Tinder profile. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, the the missing link to our supposed progression as far as like going from apes to man. Like apparently, like they they have like everything up to like a certain point, and then there's like a missing link there. I don't know, but I'm also not so like. Up, I'm not very opposed to the idea of the government hiding a lot of historical information from us, like or mm-hmm. just not acknowledging a lot of that information. For example, like steam was invent, or like, the idea of like steam generated stuff was invented, like in the BC era by like the Greeks and the Egyptians and Romans. And it's it's an actual thing, but it's not talked about a lot in historical textbooks or anything like that. But it's been it's been proven that it's an actual thing, but for some reason we just don't talk about it. Yeah. So I think there's there's a missing link be- between, you know, Neanderthals, Neanderthals, however you say it, to to where we are today. Like apparently there should be something in between us and they, they haven't fit found it yet or, or whatever, or whatever it is. That was so creepy. But like the other, the, the yeah, one of the other theories, like when you're, you're talking about like aliens and stuff like that and, you know, interacting with human beings from the past and stuff like that to kind of progress us where we are today, especially technologically, there's some belief in that with the whole ancient aliens theory. Um, but what's really interesting is that uh, they there's some belief that there there not only has been technological advancements, but that there's been genetic alterations in order for us to get to where we are today. Mm. And that's why there's such a big de, uh, disparagement between uh, the Neanderthals up to what we are, you know, as Homo sapiens today. Yeah, because it's like, well, how the hell, how far back can we go in history? I genuine question like how far back can we go to recorded history i agree and, and dalton that's it, pro it's i completely agree maybe there isn't a missing link and maybe you know we were created by you know these gods and we lived in this pre-mortal life we came to this earth to live and to learn and to die and eventually we're going to experience more things when we die like we don't we don't know oh hey dalton joined but welcome back sir glad to have you uh, maybe the missing link doesn't exist. Yeah, true. May not exist. Yeah, we're just we're just hypothesizing and theorizing and and talking about fun stuff. Dalton, if you got any cool theories, let us know. Um, I think we're all going to end up devolving to animals. We'll we'll go back to being like dogs. <laughs> we'll be like well were- werewolves and vampires, Mon- monkeys to humans to then dogs. Dogs. Yep. That's, of- that's- <laughs> I was gonna say if I could get reincarnated as a dog, I'd be, I'd be cool with that. Like bring me back as a as either like a pit bull or a golden retriever. Like yeah, and that's the one thing I, I have an issue. I, mean, I don't think it's an issue, but I just think that it's really interesting in the different belief systems where people believe that they have multiple lives, and so when you die, you don't go into like another realm or a spiritual uh, or a spirit you know place. You actually die but you're reborn into something else at that moment in time and you become something else. So you can either become like another person, you know, another gender, uh, another, uh, 
uh, animal or something like that? Or what about the idea of reincarnation, but into an alien on a different planet? Hmm. Yeah, really lost in the cosmos that there. Be, <laughs> that would be interesting. You just die, and all of a sudden, you're like on a spaceship. And that makes my brain Alpha hurt. Centauri Five, and you're just like, this is very <laughs> interesting and and very uh, wonderful experience. I don't like, want to think about it. It makes my brain hurt. You're it's reincarnated fun. into some plant on one of Jupiter's moons or whatever. That would be a really cool experience, though. I'm not yeah. gonna lie. See, you say that, and I'm sitting there thinking that would suck. <laughs> Well, and, well, you wouldn't really remember it. And here's the thing, too, Maybe. is just like, you know, uh, Elon Musk is he he has his sights set for Mars. And it's really interesting to hear him talk about us like moving between the different bodies in our solar system. And he's just like, yeah, we want to get like my goal is to get to Mars. And it's like but he always talks about but it's going to be very, very difficult. Uh, it's going to be a very long period of time to do it. Uh, they're going to have to continue to send like shuttles with, you know, supplies and oxygen and stuff like that because you can't survive on that planet as far as we know. So more would, than likely, a lot of people are going to die in the process. So it's like, but it's going to be really interesting to see if we actually get there in our lifetime. The thing is, though, is like after 60 years, like 50 or 60 years of um, space exploration or exploration and meaning like being able to go to the moon and do construction work on satellites and all that you would think that with the amount of technological advancements that we've made within those 50 to 60 years that we would have made it to mars by now at least he's thinking at least he's thinking where we should have been thinking like yeah like he's yeah. thinking that we should have been on mars like already like yeah. if we had to continued our our space exploration and got to the moon that okay now the next thing is we're going to mars yeah. but instead after we hit the moon we're just like well we beat the russians so we're, we're done <laughs> so it seemed like it was just like a big political thing than actually like trying to explore what's out there or it was all faked and oh, it was a conspiracy that's, oh, that's that's the next because that's a theory that's out or there too. Conspiracy the moon landing was theory. fake <laughs> I'm just throwing it out there oh, for discussion. That's interesting. That's an interesting comment from Dalton. He says that if reincarnation is a thing, there is a, then there is a certain number of beings in the universe that always have been, are, and always will be. Like the number would never change. Dalton, there's a planet somewhere out there with a rock that's the shape of your skull. Wait, what? <laughs> If the if the universe is infinite and all theories are possible and valid, then there is a rock somewhere out there. Well, that well that with, that begs the, the question though, because Dal if if Dalton is his you know his his theory here where he says that if there is, you know, if you die and be, just become something else, that means that there's only a certain number of existing things out there, and so. Uh, the number would never change, so therefore the the universe is finite. It's not infinite. You lost me. <laughs> or maybe no, I'm just I, talking out of my ass. I don't know. I'm just I'm just throwing stuff out there and seeing what sticks. It's like I'm making spaghetti. Okay, okay. I, think, <laughs> I made him spaghetti. I <laughs> think we need to be somewhat factual in our. And Starbuck agrees with me. <laughs> Dom says to destroy the rock. I love it. Dang. I love his comments. You he always has great comments. You wouldn't want to keep that rock. Be like, oh, look at this. I found a cool rock from my, or from this planet that looks like my face. Oh, like, bro. If, if you don't have to like go to bed as early here pretty soon, we should totally move it up to like an hour and a half. Cause like we literally could go on this topic. I got to go topics in like two hours. Let's I have to go too. <laughs> and my Everybody brain go is hurting. Or... <laughs> I think so. Yeah, I'm. I will. I will say that my brain can only handle so much conspiracy and crisis. Before and so you go time. into cognitive dissonance and I, like, we're, we're philosophizing we go, right now. <laughs> yeah, but if we go longer than an hour on this, I will leave here mid panic attack. <laughs> so we do not want that. At least I don't. I don't want that. I don't want yeah. that for you. I also have a lot of stuff I've got to get done. <laughs> Excuse me. So, <laughs> however, it was fun talking about random pyramids and monkeys and. Yeah, we kind of we kind of did a good spread. Did a good spread. And aliens are real. Good spread. Skinwalker Ranch. 
is a real thing. Well, I don't know if aliens are real. I, They're I totally real. Whoa, hello. Sorry. My ears That's are bleeding. scared Sorry. me a little um, bit. <laughs> <laughs> I would definitely say there, I mean, there's definitely some, especially when like, you know, uh, you know, the U.S. Navy oh. and, and stuff like that are bringing out a lot of this, you know, declassifying a lot of these different videos. And it, it is very interesting and it's very intriguing. Um, however, it doesn't give us a yes or no answer. It's not definitive, which is unfortunate. Um, I would love some definitive proof other than, hey, I was abducted by aliens and there's stuff flying in the sky that we don't understand. Dude, um, watch what you say because now we're going to have aliens come and try and abduct you to prove that they're alive and real. <laughs> I'll, have to, I'll have to tell you some some of my weird dreams that that feels that way <laughs> that's well, it that's i like you. to i like I to believe that aliens are real like i think that you know just the the coin the phrase from um what's that jody foster movie with uh what's his name handsome guy contact that's it contact so like if it is just us it is an awful waste of space i mean we still don't comprehend like how big our universe is right now. Dude, I think we're stupidly egotistical as human beings to think that we are alone in this universe. Yeah. I mean, in all reality, to it's think that we are the superior being in the universe. And we're we're very easily destroyed and like this pink, pink fleshy, like we're basically bags of like like liquid. Like most of our body is like liquid. So <laughs> Okay, you took it to a weird place now. I think Wait, what time is it? I think we need to end now. I think that's Yeah, we're it. actually at at the end. Any any final thoughts? My brain hurts. Ditto. I, I could go on I could go on longer actually. I mean this is about the time if that I, I had start a going nap to sleep, so before it, I probably would have been much more sharper. Um but again, no caffeine, so I'm just kinda like Ugh. Okay. Mine kinda lags. Close well, it up. Let's close it up. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for watching another video. We really do appreciate it. All of the information is in the description down below. Don't forget to follow all that fun stuff. And from our family to yours, good night. Good night. Hello, everyone. Jay Rhymes with the Periodic Review. Today's video is sponsored by viewers like you. So thank you. Hopefully we've earned your subscription today, so don't forget to click that subscribe button and hit that damn bell to turn on your notifications so you don't miss a content release. Check out the video links at the end of every video to view our previous content as well as visit the description section for more links to enjoy. Thank you so much for watching today's video and from my family to yours, good night.